Winning Cures Everything, College Football Week 7 Recap, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Uh, you can find more information on all six of their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. You can also find our picks and everything else, along with the football picks contest, over at winningcureseverything.com. Chris, let's jump into it. Week 7 was uh, not expected to be anything crazy, and yet it went absolutely haywire from Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning on. It was just utter mayhem, and I loved every second of it. It was pretty crazy. Yeah, it was, it it was, was definitely chaos. nuts. Your, your Tigers uh, uh, definitely threw a wrench into a few things. Uh, Single so that best was a point. win of the season, I think, for any team. We oh, yeah. That. Oh, absolutely. Notre absolutely. Dame's win over Michigan right there with it, but, but – Michigan but at the time, at the time, it wasn't that big because people didn't know what Michigan was. They just thought, That's oh, right. same old Michigan. That's right. So uh, let's go through the list that I've got. Um, first off, we'll start off with your Tigers. 36-16 okay. over Georgia. Uh, LSU, 275 rushing yards. Four for four on fourth down. LSU had zero turnovers. Georgia with four turnovers. It seemed like, uh, I mean, LSU dominated this game. Like this was a this was a beatdown from the moment go right. So there there are two there are two parts of the story that I want to talk about. A yes, Coach O is outperforming every expectation that anybody in the country had for him. Yes, out coaching all of these coaches that are coming in. I don't know if they are underestimating him, not prepared, what, but man, he is making them all look really bad. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand think, the passing yesterday. Like you know, it's not working with Jake Fromm. I, I don't. I don't get what they well, were. So, doing. so that's that's the other narrative. But but let's let's stay on O for a minute. And and, and LSU, uh, the the one hiccup they had was against Florida, and they got beat in that game. But that was a super tight, crazy close game, and it took two pick sixes for Florida to beat them. Something LSU just does not do. Okay. No. So now let's go back to Kirby. This is a story about Kirby. Now, there, there's a couple of things about this that bother me about college football. A, we talk about how every game matters. Every week matters. But it doesn't because absolutely the first article written today about Georgia is, is yesterday did not matter. They still control their own destiny. And if they went out, yesterday might as well have not happened. So so let's get over now this. You're right. Let's get over this narrative that every week matters, that we have to make every game matter. Because if they do, then Georgia should be out, but they're not. And I don't think they should be. I disagree with that narrative to begin with. Other than that, Georgia Georgia has a problem, okay? They have a massive problem. Oh, it's they a physicality cannot, problem. They cannot go on the road in a hostile environment and win. They can't do it. They went to Auburn last year, one game. One game on the road, hostile environment, and they got their butt whipped. This year, they will only play one true road game on a hostile environment, and that was at LSU. And they well, got now, look, look, they, I'm going to give them credit for going to South Carolina, but you needed something to have. One, South Carolina was not as good as we thought. Two, you needed something crazy to happen early on to get that crowd out of it, right? That's so right. you get that pick six, and – You've got you're playing with a lead the whole ball game, and so but, but from there, Kirby, when Kirby gets behind, he completely throws the game plan out. He complete he he panics, he freaks out, and he doesn't know what to do. He is a great front running coach, and I think they're a great front running team. But it, yeah. when the game gets tight, when the game gets close, we saw it in the national championship game against Alabama. Now the big comeback against Oklahoma, that was pretty impressive. That was a defensive front did their job, and Oklahoma's defense lets anybody score on them. But somebody yeah. who's going to play you a hard-nosed defense, if they get behind, it's ball game. It's over. They're not catching up because they're going to panic. He's going to crap all over himself. That's what he's done. He did it against Auburn. He did it against LSU this year. And and he did it against Alabama in the national championship game. When the yeah. game gets tight, he falls apart. You are uh, you are correct on that. He wants to win a national championship. He's got to fix that. Yes, one hundred percent. Well, and I think I'm still not sure why he didn't move 
to Justin Fields, like maybe in the second mm-hmm. half, like, I just, and, and that's that wouldn't have fixed the problem. I get it, but like at that point, you might have a little more poise. But it, maybe Justin Fields isn't ready yet. What like they I, need a lot to of do to me. beat LSU or be competitive in that game? I texted you this yesterday. They needed to have Fromm in the background to have the threat of the pass, but yeah. they needed to hand the ball out to Holyfield. Holyfield got eight yards of touch, and that was not you know a bunch of short yard rushes and one sixty two yarders. Every time he touched the ball, he got for eight yards. And every time he was in the backfield, I panicked. And as soon as they snapped the ball, it was all play action. And as soon as I saw the ball didn't go to him, I breathed easy, and it didn't matter. They could not (laughs) do anything. That was a one-man wrecking machine, and I don't know why they run swift a thousand times, and he touched it seven. I I can't answer that. I I can't. Well, to be fair, DeAndre Swift averaged uh, like 6.2 yards a carry. But he had a bunch of big rushes and then a bunch of little rushes. You can't beat a team in a close game for that. You want a guy that gets it six times every time he touches it. Yeah, no, I do agree with that. Swift averaged six, but he didn't get six. I mean, that's just uh, one of those weird numbers. Yeah, no, you're you're right. You're right. I mean, you can have a 60-yarder and then have like four one-yarders and average 20 yards carry, whatever. Uh, So eight undefeated teams left. We've got Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, NC State, Notre Dame, UCF, USF, and Cincy. Um, USF, UN, or USF, and Cincinnati all play each other because they're in the same division. And right. then NC State and Clemson play this weekend. This weekend. I'm so, kind of game day's not going there. Uh, I think they've been looking to go to Pullman. Well, you saw I was talking to Christopher Leak last night. They've been yeah. looking to go to Pullman for a while. And long. I saw Herb Streak's tweet in video, and I and I agree with him. I like look. Nobody loves Mike Leach more than this guy. All right. Oh yeah. I'm I'm a fan that they're going to Pullman, but you got two undefeated teams in the ACC. One of these teams could compete for a national championship. Nobody in that game is competing for a national title. It, true. True. But. At the same time, does anybody really truly believe in NC State? I mean, they were ranked 20th last week. They might move up because some teams beat other teams, but you know, I, I think it's I think it's a, a ridiculous thing to not believe in NC State and their ability to win this game. But I think most people think it's a foregone conclusion that Clemson is just going to win that conference and run away with it. Uh, and tell me this: if Alabama, Notre Dame, Ohio State, and Clemson all went out, that's going to be your playoff, right? That's sadly going to be your playoff. UCF is just getting crapped on. They're just getting left out. Yeah. They just are. The yeah, Huey brings up on Facebook. Down, the, it, yeah. it, it, he says uh, Clemson is going to lose to some random team. Hey, you you almost saw Pitt pull off uh, a thing yesterday. We'll get to that later in the notes. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, – I mean, you never know. Like, it, crazy things can happen. Uh, so, I don't expect all of these teams to go undefeated. I, I may not expect any of them to go undefeated, but we'll see. Uh, Michigan 38, Wisconsin 13. Let's talk about that one. Uh, Harbaugh put a beat down. Beat ooh, down. Good gracious. Uh, Shea Patterson, 14 out of 21 for 124 yards. Nine rushes, 90 yards, one touchdown. Look, here's the total yardage. Michigan 444 with 320 yards rushing on Wisconsin. Wisconsin had 283 total yards. And you, know I love, you know I love Wisconsin, and I love Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. But but that was no match. That that game was tight for the first half, and it's like Michigan went in went into halftime, made adjustments, and Wisconsin said, "Hey, let's keep doing what we're doing." And it was a completely different second half. Yeah, Michigan's defense, they play with an intensity, oh, yeah. a level that is just different. It uh, Alex Hornibrook looked completely flustered. They had him way out of his game. That's right. It was uh, it was fun to watch. You know, people have been looking for. I mean, Michigan looks like they are in the playoff race now. Uh, I, but they they got to go I and win at are. Michigan State, right? I think I, but they got to win at Michigan State, and then they got to go to the big house. That's well, they they play in the big house. <laughs> uh, I'm saying they got to go, go to the, the horseshoe house. at the end of the year. Yeah, oh, the horseshoe. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so they still yeah. got Penn State too. I mean, they got some really difficult games, but this looks like a really really good football team. I mean, I, I'm excited about it because college football is better when the big teams are better, right? Texas, Notre Dame, Michigan, when those teams are playing well, along with your Ohio State's, Alabama's, whatever. These teams got to matter. Big football is better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Iowa State 30, West Virginia 14. 
Did you see this one coming? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I did actually. I did. You and I talked That's, about. This yeah, I, I called game. it. <laughs> I jumped on it. I got some money line action in there yesterday. I felt Same great. Here. Loved it. No. I, I want to know this. Why you you bet on the? I, we have made a lot of money. They're your gambling pick team. Why is it that Iowa State the last two years just gets no credit from Vegas at all? I mean, because they, they lose no presence the in, in Nevada. They lose the teams they have no business losing to. But it doesn't matter. Like Every big time team comes in there if they don't win it outright, they at least cover. I bet they're a, I bet they're a hundred percent against top ranked teams that come in the A's. I, I don't think at, at least not covering at least the, covering the spread. Yeah, yeah, at least yeah, covering the spread. Yes, they are. And um, the spreads keep getting bigger. Well, this one was only seven. What, so West Virginia should not be seven point favorite to this Iowa State team in Morgantown. Well, especially after seeing what we saw last night. I mean, that was uh, that was great. Here's the stats on it: Brock Purdy, eighteen out of twenty-five, two hundred fifty-four yards with three touchdowns, one pick. Will Greer. 11 out of 15 for 100 yards with one touchdown and a pick. How, they didn't let West how, Virginia have the ball. Uh, how, David how Montgomery they hit that, I don't believe it. Yeah, that's amazing. Like, oh, David Montgomery had 29 rushes for 189 yards and a touchdown. Iowa State had 498 total yards to 152 for this West Virginia offense. So, And, and Dana Holgerson came out after the game and said, they didn't come up with some magical defense to stop us. We kept shooting ourselves in the foot. And he's partly right. Um, because there were plays to be made that they just missed, but they they didn't have the football. I have a question for you, Gary. I have a question. All right. Okay. We we know, and we're I don't know if we're going to get to it, if we're even going to cover it, because the game might not matter that much. Auburn, pretty bad. I Auburn. got it down on my notes here. So hang on, let me ask you a question. How would Campbell look in Auburn on the sidelines? Uh, he'd look a lot better than what they got, I think. I'm, you know, I'm telling you, that guy's going to get paid by a big boys school this year. But Auburn is not paying anybody other than Gus Malzahn. Like they they gave him a forty nine million dollar guaranteed contract after last season. Well, I'm not a, after last season. After they beat Alabama and Georgia, they beat Bama. Yep, and Georgia. And then they lose two straight at the end of the year to go ten and four, and then they've lost three out of seven to start this year, and and that includes a win over Washington. Yeah. That I still can't figure out. So, yeah, I'm. I don't know. I, I'm, just, uh, I'm just. I'm just telling you, somebody's going to pay that man, and I'm trying to find the big school that's going to fork out the dough to do it. Ohio State. Oh, I think God. Urban's done after this year. That is going to piss me right off. Uh, he's dude. Campbell's from Ohio. I don't give it. He, he coached at Toledo. Like he, no. Ohio State would be the perfect spot for him. And so, and I, I think Urban's done. Now, like I, with his now, now you've ruined my, you've ruined my Sunday morning. I'm sorry, buddy, but I'm hey, sorry. I think he'll be good there. I think it'd be good. everybody's good there. You could go to Ohio State and be fine. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some more Big Ten. Michigan State 21, Penn State 17. I know this puts a smile on your face, uh, oh boy, D'Antonio. Michigan State outgained Penn State 418 to 397 yards. They didn't let McSorley run, and it completely messed with Penn State's offense. They only managed 17 points. Um, they, I don't know. what is Michigan State basically the uh, the Redskins of college football? Like I was one literally thinking crap, the same. All right, you and I are spending way too much time together because I was that was the analogy I was going to use. I almost <laughs> went like Belichick in the sense of he just doesn't lose after a loss. Like you're not beating him two games in a row. Yeah, but but I thought, all right, that's a little extreme. I love the guy, but I can't I can't put him and Belichick in the same thing. So I was thinking, they're the Redskins. Every other week, they're great, and next week, you probably want to bet against them. I don't know who they play. I don't know where it is. It doesn't matter. They uh, they play Michigan next week, I believe. Oh yeah, then yeah, that's going. I yeah. think they're going to have a huge letdown. Maybe it's not. A, it's a rivalry game, but it was, like, yeah, that the game's next week, right? There was no doubt. There was no doubt in my mind they were going to cover the 14 against Penn State. There was just no doubt. Yeah, Michigan at Michigan State next week. We got big games next week. We'll, we'll talk about these. But, I mean, my goodness, you got uh, 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 Oklahoma at TCU, Oregon at Washington State, Michigan at Michigan State, Mississippi State at LSU, uh, NC State at Clemson. 
You know what the, the ABC primetime game is? Ohio State at Purdue. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, that's the ABC primetime game. That's, that's just fair. Well, it. Felica told me that, that he and Herb Street and whoever else have to fly from Pullman to West Lafayette, Indiana, and, and that's probably the first time that's ever been done ever. Yeah, no, nobody's ever made that trip in the history of the world. No, you're right about that. The nice thing uh, is you do that on a private jet because there's no airline that's making that trip. Exactly. Uh, UCF 31, Memphis 30, Memphis 281 rushing yards. They looked like they had found a way to – uh, they they found chinks in the armor, right? And and the, Memphis had the blueprint, and they couldn't finish it. The end of that game was so ridiculous. And I think Michigan, uh, Michigan, I think Memphis wins the game if it doesn't start raining. Like mm-hmm. I, they they lost two fumbles in the rain. I, I was just I was just waiting on Memphis to mess that up. I just yeah, and, and UCF it. is a really good school. They're yes. really good. They're not getting the credit they deserve from anybody. And and they deserve to be in the conversation of the top best teams. They're a good school. Yeah. They're they, going to find is, ways to win. Yeah, and they did. They absolutely found a way to win, even if it was Memphis shooting themselves in the foot. You get down to the 30. But hang on, how much, of that is, how much of that is Central Florida taking the ball away? Well, look, look, look. At the end of the game, I mean, Memphis had at least a shot at a 52-yard field goal to win it. And you get down to the 35-yard line with 32 seconds left, and yeah. rather than clocking the ball, they decide to uh, to try and run a play, and they get a false start. They got no timeouts left, so it's a 10-second runoff. So you're down to 18 seconds, and that kid at quarterback, Brady White, looking for somebody to pass it to, and he passes it to somebody that is inbounds. Yep. And he falls down, and they can't get another playoff. And they, they're, just, they're, Memphis is a really good team. They're a really good team. They're not yeah. a great team. They, they're they going to still make mistakes. That, that's just the way it's going to be. They're not. They'll, they'll probably be four and four after this coming weekend because they play at Missouri this week. And so, I mean, now like, I could see them possibly winning that game, but. That don't scare me. Never, get, I, I understand. I'm with you. But they, if they make that many mistakes at home against UCF, you see a way different class in Missouri. Yeah. No, I, well, I, I, we're, I, wait, we're not even judging the same book right now. I don't know. I, I think I think they're pretty don't, don't, do think they're... don't do that. Don't do that, Gary. You know okay. it's we'll, you we'll know move it's on wrong. to the next one then. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, Tennessee 30, Auburn 24. Man, look, Auburn, three turnovers. Tennessee, zero. Auburn actually moved the football. They rushed for over 100 yards for the first time in three games. Well, this is – yeah, it was three straight games, and now they uh, they rushed for over 100. Yeah. Um, this was uh, – I mean, a, a lot of people called for this. I could not believe that the line opened up at 18 and a half, and a lot of, a lot of people jumped on it. It was bet down to 16 and a half. I took Tennessee plus 16 and a half. Um, I mean, have, what, what do you think? Like, it, what is Auburn this year? Well, hang on now. Let's not discredit Tennessee – that one team is getting better, looked awful before the season started, and every week they have looked a little better and a little better and a little better. Agreed. The other team Agreed. looked great at the beginning of the season, and every week is getting a little worse and a little worse and a little worse. That's this, that's what I'm this, saying. Yeah, this, but I'm, I, yeah, I get it. Like that's it. We have two different. This is not just about Auburn. This is about both of these teams going in different directions because we need to give some credit to Pruitt and the Tennessee. Because it would have been real easy after the beginning of the season and the way this thing is rolled for them to just pack it in and say, you know what, let's play for next year. Let's start recruiting. Let's not worry about game film. Let's get the guys that are going to be here next year some reps. Let's get them some game speed, and let's pack this thing in. And they haven't done that. They fought like hell against Georgia last week. They fought like hell against Auburn this week, and they pulled out a win this time. Yeah, they absolutely did. Uh, let's move on from there. Virginia 16, Miami 13. Uh, oh, man. It looked, Mark Rick. This is what Mark Rick does, though. This is why I got started in Georgia. Well, and if you look at the stats, like both teams had three turnovers. It was just Virginia capitalized on theirs, and Miami didn't. Uh, Miami 339 yards to 231 yards for Virginia. But Bronco Mendenhall has, has got them believing there. I, uh, I like him a lot. Yeah. I really I don't know if he can ever get Virginia to a 
real power in the ACC. I mean, I foresee him being able to get them to like that Syracuse BC level right now to where they can mess people up. They can upset some people, but I don't know that he'll ever get them to, I can win the ACC. I'd like I, to see. I can see it, well, look, even Larry Fedora had, had North Carolina in that spot, right? That's like, right? I think that he can get there. He can be eight and four, seven and five, nine and three in good years. You know, and then once in a while when the rest of the conference is really down, you go 10 and two and upset Maybe. some people you're not supposed to, right? Yeah. Because right now, like, that conference is haywire. They're just all over the place. And you don't know who you can trust. You don't know who's who. Like, Duke seems like your best bet along with Clemson, right? <laughs> like, it, it's just crazy to think about. Clemson uh, needs to come out of this bye and look way different than they've looked because they – they are undefeated, but they've got some wins that are shady as crap, and they don't look impressive at all. Yeah, I uh, there are I several one-loss teams that look way better than Clemson to me. Way yeah. better. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you 100. Uh, percent I can't believe we hadn't talked about this yet. I put it low in the notes. I don't know why. Oregon 30, Washington 27 in overtime. Oregon was what a, three what of a three. Game. Yeah, absolutely fantastic ball game. Uh, Oregon three of three on fourth down. They were nine of eighteen on third down, and uh, I mean it was a fairly even game. Both quarterbacks looked completely flustered against the other defenses. Uh, Washington missed the field goal from thirty-seven at the end of regulation that would have won the game. Justin Herbert didn't have his best game, obviously. Jake Browning looks like he always does in big spots. He hits a few passes, but other times he just can't make the throws. Uh, what do you take away? I mean, Oregon's fun again, right? Oregon is fun again. Eugene is rocking. That is a tough place to play. We'll see if they can travel. We'll see you next yeah. week. But uh, I, I do is... think that in Eugene, big game, man, that is that is a place now. There were a couple of years where they went where not a real home field advantage. They didn't play tough. They didn't play physical. Man, that's not the same Oregon team anymore. They're different. I, I think Mario Cristobal was, was the answer at head coach for that. Correct. Cannot the Different mindset. Yeah, I love that guy. He is – man, he's doing so well there. Uh, I tossed this one on here just because it was it was fun to think about. So this is uh, part of the uh, the random notes at the end. Okay. Uh, Florida 37, Vandy 27. Uh, Vandy was up 21 to 3. And then we had – we almost had a coach's fight, which is always fun. And yep. I, I'll tell you this. I will go on and, and put this on the record for everybody. Dan Mullen and Todd Grantham don't want anything to do with a fight with Derek Mason. Oh, I will no. do that. So you and I have had this conversation. I don't know that we've had it on air before, but we've had this conversation where, like, SEC coaches getting into a fight. Like, one and <laughs> two, is Owen Muschamp, and, and, and I don't know who one or two is. Number three, I think it's Derek Mason, and I think the gap between Mason and everybody else is pretty big. I agree with, agree that. with that. That was, uh, that was nuts. It was, so it was I, I, I pose I pose this question too on uh, okay. I guess uh, every day is Saturday or whatever's Facebook page. Um, is there any coach in the SEC that you would favor Dan Mullins in a fight one on one against? And I thought, well, maybe Moorhead and Saban because they're old, but like anybody else. And somebody finally brought up probably Gus, and I was like, okay, today yeah. no Gus question. Is Gus is a whip dog. <laughs> And and both those old guys might beat up Gus today. Oh, uh, you're right. But I think right that's the that. list. I think that's it. I don't think anybody else Mullins is favored in a fight over. I think you're probably right. I mean, Pruitt. I think he's getting his butt whipped. No. Yeah. No. Like no all those, those guys. Boys, you know those what about Chad boys Morris? grew up fighting each other. Who? What about Chad Morris? I could see him beating Chad Morris. Chad Morris is kind of old. Yeah. Yeah, he's got some and age. And he's a small guy. Yeah, he's a little guy. He might be a little scrapper than Dan, but let's uh let's go through the rest of these notes real quick. We'll make it we'll make it fast. Iowa could win the Big Ten West now. I think Wisconsin is is pretty beat up. They've still got a co- couple of tough games. Iowa looks fantastic. Uh, yep. Forty two to sixteen win over Indiana. Uh, Northwestern thirty four, Nebraska thirty one. Nebraska they they seized defeat from the jaws of victory, as as people say. They had a ninety eight point six percent win probability. And the up 10 with, like, four minutes left in the game. 
and just can't get – I mean, Northwestern went on a 99-yard touchdown drive with less than two minutes left with no timeouts. Yeah. Vince Lombardi says it all the time. He said it all the time as a saying, which was, you know, winning is contagious, but, but sadly so is losing. Yeah, that is 100% true. I, I think Scott Frost will get that thing turned around, but it's going to take some time because they got to learn how to win. Like, and, and I don't think at Northwestern was going to be the place to do it. Uh, obviously, both of us bet that game, and we lost it. It, it. If Northwestern, instead of playing for a field goal, they just go and, and score the touchdown. Correct. We both cover. Yep. Just so frustrating, especially with a, a field goal kicker that's just not great. Like he's Pat, a high. Pat Fitzgerald did not do a well a good job of coaching that game. I don't think those guys looked prepared. And for some reason, like the announcers were like, Oh man, this was the best week of practice they've had. They're ready for this game. And I'm thinking, please don't blow it. We're watching the game. If yeah. that's the best week of practice they've had, we watch Northwestern because of our boys at West Lot, more than most people down here in the South. <laughs> Probably. If, that, if that's the way they look after the best week of practice. Northwestern got some problems. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, Notre Dame 19, Pitt 14. Notre Dame played with fire and and got singed a little bit, but they didn't get burned. They uh, they come out with a win. Ian Book looked pretty awful. Uh, but Pat Narduzzi does this every year, right? Like, they, they look like crap. And then they they come out against the big boys and, and just play really well, really well. Well, this is, this is what happens in college football. Sometimes you 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 got these games that are going to be fights that they shouldn't be, and you got to win them. UCF did it, Notre Dame did it. You shouldn't be knocked for that. That's that's part of winning the game, man. It's not all going to be easy. It's part of a, a possible championship season. I mean, you, you find a way to win games like that. Uh, UCLA got the first win, thirty-seven to seven over Cal. I don't know what Cal is right now. Justin Wilcox looks like he has lost this team this year. They are beat up. They. No, no fight. No, no. How much? How much credit do we got to give Chip for turning this thing around? Because he could have had a Scott Frost season too, and he's played really close games, really good games to against some opponents that we think are pretty good the last couple of weeks. Well, I'll tell you this: they are they are really, really young in very key positions, uh, and I think it's just like we said, finding a way to win. And against Cal, you can do that. I mean, they they have more talent than Cal. So, and I don't think Nebraska has more talent than Northwestern, which is crazy to think about. But after the last few recruiting classes uh, with with Mike Riley in Nebraska, it, it kind of makes sense. Uh, last one, toss this on here: Bama thirty nine, Missouri ten. Uh, the two a knee injury is the only thing to really take out of this. That's right. Uh, look, I don't know that you even play him against Tennessee. I would. not Then you got a bye week, and That's then right. you got LSU. You got three weeks to to heal up, make everything good. Uh, it's a, a, a mild knee sprain. They said he could have come back in last night. He went out of the game just because it felt funny, and he just wanted to get it checked out. Uh, but they, I mean, they downplayed it, said it wasn't that big of a deal. He could come why, back why in. Would you, why would you play him at all? In your, you got the game in control. Like, at yeah. no point in time were you in danger of losing that game. It's foolish and arrogant to, to, to throw him back in. I agree. And I would do I the agree. same thing. See, I would dress him. And if the game looks scary and, you know, th- then you say, okay, all right, now we've got to start this game over and let's let's figure this thing out and you get in there and go put some points up. But but if you're never in danger of losing, then, then it's just foolish and arrogant to, to play him. Agreed. I agree with that. All right, that is going to wrap up the college football recap. Uh...